of the state. And if you'd, oh, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, if you'd like to learn more about whose land you're on and whose land some of our campuses are on, check out this link in the chat that I will be posting right now. And it's also the QR code on your screen um, so that we can recognize that the land really benefits the UC community. So if this is your first time hearing about the University of California, here is what you need to know. Our students, faculty, and staff are leaders across sectors from education, technology, fine arts, healthcare, and business, and whatever your interests are, scientific, humanitarian, entrepreneurial, or social, every single campus can help you learn how to think about those interests and how you can develop, contribute, and even change whatever field you're in. We're here to support your growth in knowledge and skills to succeed in your professional endeavors and contribute to your communities, you know, whomever or whatever community you are part of. Here's the purpose and plan. So tonight, this is where you can learn about UC as you begin thinking about your college options in the coming years. So whether you plan to attend right out of high school or transfer from community college, we really hope that you, know, you leave this webinar with more info about what you can do to be a strong applicant for the UC. So keep in mind at the bottom of your screen, there is a Q&A portion. So make sure to ask your questions in the Q&A. The chat is not accessible to you all uh, to send us any chats, but please make sure to use the Q&A and utilize any links that we put into the chat. Every single campus has an admission staff or a student here available to answer your questions. And you know, while we do have uh, staff as resources, we may not be able to get to your question. So please don't feel upset if we can't answer your question. There are 1,600 of you here, but we wanna be as useful to you as possible. Um, another thing to note is that this isn't exactly the event where we will go over specific admission eligibility requirements or specific programs or how admissions decisions are made. There are so many resources on those topics, um, but the flow of the event is uh, we will be covering these topics where you'll hear from admissions reps from Berkeley, San Diego, Santa Barbara, and Riverside. And you'll even hear from students and parents from Irvine, Merced, UCLA, Santa Cruz, and Davis in our panel discussion. If there's a question that you have that you'd like the panelists to answer, make sure you let us know in the chat. Now, I'd like to welcome Erica Sanchez from UC Berkeley and Christina Sandoval Paquette from UC San Diego to come on camera, introduce themselves, and tell you the value of UC and the UC experience. Hi, everyone. My name is Erica Sanchez. I use she, her, AR pronouns, and I'm an assistant director in the call in, um, sorry, in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions at UC Berkeley. So I'll be starting off this section and talking a little bit about the value of the UC and the UC experience. Can go to the next slide. So the UC experience, we have nine undergraduate campuses and 82% of our students are California residents, but we have students that are representing almost every state in the US and every continent is represented except for Antarctica. 30% of our students are going to be community college transfer students and 40% of our students are first generation, meaning that they're the first in their family to attend um, college. So we have a, a great diversity and you can find a little bit of everything on our campuses and it's really about picking a campus it's going to be a good fit for you. Next slide. So when you're thinking about what you want to major in and what you'd like to study, I think the UC, we often think of like STEM majors, engineering, and other things too. So we have business administration, computer science, data science, which is huge, and a ton of humanities programs as well. So political science, um, interdisciplinary language studies. So there's a plethora of things that you can pick from. And it's really important that you look at each individual campus to see what we have to offer, because although we're sister campuses, we have different majors. So for example, nursing, you can find at Irvine in LA, but you wouldn't necessarily find it at, at other campuses. Next slide. And here, just so we can show you really briefly, this is what the eligibility criteria are for freshmen and transfer applicants. We're not gonna go into detail and you will get access to these slides after the after the session. So you can take a little bit of a closer look, but just so that you can get the idea and you'll get more information on this in your junior and senior years in high school. Next slide. 
So the UC experience, we're looking for requirements and we're looking at selection. So we're looking to see, did you fulfill requirements? Did you go above and beyond? Things that we consider as we're looking at the context that you're applying from. So what are your academics? Are there AP or IB courses available? Are you taking advantage of those? Um, family structure may look like, and how are you giving us your context in those personal insight questions, as well as the extracurricular section. So it's really important that you utilize those spaces. And again, there's tons of resources that you can access online to help you, um, to help guide you in that process. Next slide. And so here are some programs that you can also take advantage of at a UC. So we have our Education Abroad Program, EAP. What's great about that is it's our study abroad. And when you study abroad on one UC campus, you're traveling with all UC students. So if you're at UC Berkeley, you can travel with people from UC Davis, UC San Diego, et cetera. Next, we have the UC DC program, which is where students can go intern for the summer and go to Washington DC to be at the Capitol. We also have inter-campus visitor programs. So maybe you attend UCLA and you decide you wanted to go visit um, and do some research over at UC Davis for a semester or a quarter. You can absolutely do that. All of our campuses are gonna have a lot of undergraduate research programs available to you. We are a tier one research institution and there's a lot of work learn programs and internships available across the campuses as well. Next slide. So I'll use myself as an example. I'm a proud Cal alum, go Bears. I majored in ethnic studies, which is looking at the intersectionality of race, gender, and class. And I was able to conduct research in my fourth year as a part of the McNair program. The McNair program gave me a $3,200 stipend, and I took a research methodologies course for one semester. And in the summer, I was able to focus on my research, which was archival work. I was looking at the desegregation of Boston schools with the busing incidents that were going on in the 1970s, and really looking at how uh, Black mothers in particular were politicizing their identity and trying to assure that their students were receiving um, the best education possible. So this is just one form of research. And I think it's really important to know that I didn't know what research was in high school and I got to college and I realized, you know, I learned a little bit more about it and I was able to engage in, in scholarly research that I think oftentimes people think it's a microscope and you're in a lab, but it can also be archival. It can also be qualitative. Um, there's a lot of ways to conduct research. Next slide. And the UC experience we have on a lot of our campuses, community engaged courses where you get to work in the field, where you're going into the community and working with community organizations so that you can build from that. And, um, you know, we have a lot of faculty and student research that are involved in environmental justice, prison abolition, indigenous movements, and social justice. And it's a way for people to put theory into practice. So you take what you learn in the school but then you're gonna to have to go into the real world and apply it. So I think this is a great opportunity where it bridges that gap and you're allowed to do both. You're going to your classroom and studying theories, but then you're going into the field and being a part of organizations and seeing how that theory plays out. And it's a little messy. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And how do you make adjustments? And I think that's what's great about UC and research is that we're pushing the envelope. We're trying to find new things and how to um, make sure that the theory and the practice are lining up better. Next slide. And I'd like to toss All right. Well, thank you so much, Erica, for sharing your experience with um, research and with what you've done with the University of California. So we're gonna transition on and talk a little bit about the impacts of research. So we often talk about undergraduate research um, and we often you'll hear when you start researching the University of California, this really big emphasis on research and how we're a research institution. But there are two questions that oftentimes come up when we're talking about research, right? What is it and why does it matter? Well, what is it as we know? is, you know, is a method in which we can get answers to the questions that we have, because research is personal. It is personal to you. Now, I had the opportunity as well to do undergraduate research. One of the cool things about research is that it's also very collaborative. Uh, so I was actually able to do research not at UC Santa Cruz, which is my alumni, but I was able to do undergraduate research at UCSF in the medical school. And I did research in learning how the brain elasticity works and why sometimes it fails, right? And this is where that research in concussions kind of comes into play. Unfortunately, that didn't really plan out for me. I realized really quickly, this is 
isn't what I want to do. So at the time, I actually had an internship working with the transfer prep program and helping high school students that were deemed non-college bound find their way to higher education. And in that internship, I was actually able to do undergraduate research and figuring out how we can utilize social media in order to communicate information about higher education. Because that was something that was very important to me. It was personal to me as a first generation student. I was personally impacted by that as someone who was also labeled non-college bound initially. But it was also a great way for me to address an issue in my community. And because research is so collaborative, say that you live in Kansas or in Arizona or in Florida, and you plan to go back home during the summers, you can actually continue your education. And it wouldn't be too hard to find UC faculty members who have partnerships in universities in your home state and even in your home country if you're joining us internationally and continue to do that research and that exploration and bring that knowledge, bring that experience back with you to the University of California and help us create knowledge by teaching us what you learn during that process. Now, research is personal. It's a great way to address you know, issues in one's community, but research is also an issue of equity, diversity, and inclusion. As we know, we recently have discovered that women have very different symptoms when it comes to heart attack than men. And a lot of that has to do with getting more women in medical research and asking those questions. But we also see that, you know, women, especially women of color, are either underdiagnosed overdiagnosed or just misdiagnosed because some of the lab you know baselines that we're using were used by very homogenous groups of people and so there's this really big push to make sure that we're looking at the whole picture and not just at a picture through one very specific lens and the university of california is dedicated in that and it's been very intentional in including diversity and equity and inclusion as part of its research process so research really is personal. It's a great way to address any of your issues. And it's a great way to address issues of equity, diversity, and inclusion within your community and the research community as well. Now, I know you might be thinking, but I'm not an expert in anything. I don't really have any big question to ask. I'm just one person. What can I do? And that's exactly the questions and the fears that I had when I first started doing undergraduate research. But thankfully, I had a wonderful supportive boss who you'll hear from in a little bit. She's actually our UC parent who really supported me and seeing that I did have big questions. I did have big goals. And together, we, will we were able to become groundbreakers and trailblazers in our own right by developing a whole new job that currently exists that did not exist before we were there. And that was as social media managers. And we did it because of the research that I was doing and looking at how we communicate information about education. At the time, Facebook was just starting. We were on MySpace at the time. I'm really dating myself now. Uh, but we were utilizing social media at that time, 12, 15 years ago, to really see, can we use this as a platform to disseminate information? And as we know today, the answer is, Absolutely, yes. So even if you feel like I don't have a big question, you really never know when you're going to be that trailblazer, that groundbreaker, until you actually start doing some of the work and just start asking the question. And all you really need is that question, that inquisitive nature that I know you already have to continue to investigate those questions and try to find the answers. So now let's go into our next slide. We're going to talk a little bit about the value of UC education. We're going to keep it in the scope of research. Now, in 2017, the University of California actually also had that question of, well, what does it mean to have a UC education? What is the value? And they were able to do their own research in figuring out what does that actually mean? What does it mean to the person itself? And what does that mean to us as a society as a whole? And we were able to see what those impacts were. Now, if you were interested, you can actually look this up. It's called, What is the Value of a UC Education? You can read their findings. There are some wonderful findings in there. And I highly encourage you, if you're interested, to look into it. Now, it's easy to think about a value of education as the cost of attendance. You know, how much does it actually cost to go to college? How much does it actually cost to get that degree?
But when we're talking about the value of UC education, we often talk about it in terms of how are you financing your education and then making an investment in yourself by going off into getting a higher level degree. Now, investments come with returns. So you're going to expect some returns on that investment, right? And here we see a wonderful example of what those returns are going to look like. The medium annual earnings of a UC graduate uh, who got their undergraduate education. Uh, this is looking at just that cohort that graduated between 1999 and 2014. And as we looked at these students, one thing we found is that a UC bachelor degree recipient on average received around $67,000 a year, six years post-graduation. Now, those of students who went on to get master's degrees, PhDs, you know, professional degrees, uh, graduate degrees were able to attain roughly around $98,000, 11 years post-graduation, far exceeding the median income from all other graduate degree holders in the state of California. The median lifetime earning for a UC alumni is greater than other California uh, college degree earners as well, which means that our students typically break even on their investment four to six years out after graduation. Now, as we see, you know, this isn't the whole picture. One of the things that I learned when I was in my history class at UC Santa Cruz is that even when you're looking at empirical information like this, it doesn't always give you the full picture. And so the question that I had was, you know, what about inflation? But when we looked at these numbers and we looked at, you know, these students and we continue to see the upper projection, we were to see that a lot of our students have pretty good job security. And this is even students in this graduating cohort, which I'm part of, who saw, you know, recessions in 2001, 2007, 2008, and 2009. So these are some very encouraging numbers. In our next slide, we're going to look at some majors. Now, one of the questions that I often get asked is, well, you know, that might be true for some majors, but not all majors, right? Like, what about those art and humanities students? Like, what are they doing with their degree? Well, as we can see here, they're doing quite a bit with their degree. As we could see, they're in every single one of these industries. In fact, every single one of our majors and, uh, are, and disciplines are in every single one of these industries. So we're really seeing that our students are very marketable. Now, this is really the 2016 median annual earning of UC graduate by industry. One of the highest and most sought after industries is that you know, computer systems, internet industry. And as you can see here, it's not just dominated by our computer science and engineering students. We're seeing our humanity students, social science, STEM, business students, all of our students are, are represented here. Now, you might be asking yourself, why? Why is that? Why are all your students in every single industry? How is that? Well, it's because of how we develop our majors and the, really the fabric of the UC system. When we're developing our majors, we're not just focusing on teaching you the basics and the theories and the theorems. We are also focused on building skills that you're going to be needing when you go off to the workforce or join us as researchers in graduate school. We're really doing that by not only giving you the basics, but by adding experiential learning. A lot of our majors require some kind of capstone project, research project. You'll find that some of our majors require you to get internships. Some of them require you to study abroad. And then, of course, we give you tons and tons of resources to continue to hone those skills and showcase them by allowing you spaces to be able to do that. We have maker spaces, incubation spaces for those of my entrepreneurs to have a business idea that you just can't wait to get started. We have hackathons, pitch fest, student organizations for you to get involved in. All of these together really is what makes our students marketable. And in our next slide, we're going to see what that actually looks like. Here we're seeing a really brief snapshot of what a UC-based education, research education means. It spurs economic growth. Since 2006, our undergraduate alumni, students that are not much older than you, have created over 2,000 different companies and have secured over $47 billion in capital. This is absolutely amazing. And some of these names I know that you know, and I know that some of you can't even imagine the world around you without places like DoorDash and Lyft. I know I can't. 
many of these businesses started not just in people's garages, but they started in our dorm rooms, in those conversations that our students were having in the classroom, outside the classroom, at our pitch fests, at our hackathons, uh, in our incubation spaces, in our student organizations. And the research-based education is really what has allowed them to be able to tackle new, old and emerging problems in some very creative and innovative way because they're using these same exact steps to create these that our faculty members are using to create those groundbreaking research um, findings that they're finding in their labs. In fact, many leading use, uh, California industries have grown out of UC research, including biotechnology, computing, semiconductors, telecommunication, and agriculture. A UC education really means that it is allowing you, the student, the ability to create, build, and shape the world that we get to live in. So let's look at some alumni who have done exactly that. Our alumni are trailblazers. Not only do we boast the first Surgeon General in the state of California and the first person to sequence DNA in space, but wonderful trailblazers like Siobhan Charles here, an alumni from UC Merced who graduated in 2012, not too long ago. Now, I know some of you might be sleeping on some of our smaller UCs like UC Merced, but please don't because they are pumping out some amazing, amazing alumni. She is currently the head of diversity and inclusion and communication at TikTok. She was also one of the first African-American women and one of the youngest employees at Twitter to lead a communications team. And she currently sits on a board, an advisory board for Forbes. She's done some amazing work and really a wonderful example of what a UC education education can do. But of course, our alumni also shape the world around us, as we'll see on our next slide. You know, we have the creator of Lyft here. We also have individuals like Shaw here from UC Riverside who saw a need and took it. You know, he had a passion for the ocean. He had a passion for conservation and an engineering degree and said, you know what? I'm going to be a conservation te uh, technologist. And that's exactly how the National Geographic Organization hired him. He followed his passion all the way through. But no one has had more of an impact on us students as me personally as a transfer student and as me as a transfer advocate and someone who works primarily with transfer students than my own chancellor, Chancellor Oakley from the California Community Colleges, a UC Irvine alumni, he is best known out throughout the state of California and the nation for implementing innovative programs and policies to help students succeed. He recently just finished a stint with the Biden administration and helping them build their education agenda and the Build Back Better plan and has currently come back and is really tackling the issue of making sure that colleges are affordable and ensuring that transfer students can actually fulfill their pathway, get their degrees and their certificates. Hey, but we're not all work and no play. Okay, we know how to have fun too, as we'll see in our next slide. I know many of you spend a lot of time trying to figure out what combination of Encanto characters you are by taking advantage of BuzzFeed. And in fact, BuzzFeed started by one of our alumni at my, at my alma mater at UC Santa Cruz. Uh, and then we also have comedians like Hasham Mijan, who is a comedian, a writer, a producer, a political commentator. You will often hear him talk about his experience at UC Davis, but no one has had a bigger impact on my ability to laugh and really see the light at the end of the tunnel, especially during hard times, like what we just went through with the COVID pandemic, like Dr. Mia Balik. I remember her as Blossom in the 90s. That's how I remember her. She took a break. She became a student. She went to UCLA. She studied neuroscience. She got her lectures. She got her master's. She got her PhD. Uh, she then became a neuroscientist, actually, joined the professional community, and then joined us once again as one of my favorite characters, Amy Farrah Fowler, someone I personally can identify with uh, from the Big Bang Theory, and now serves as the first female host for Jeopardy. Our students go on to do amazing work. And when it comes time to trying to figure out what does it mean to have a UC education? What is the value? Really, it's up to you. We are here to make an investment in you because you are making an investment in us. We're going to give you all the resources that we can possibly can to make you see successful. And honestly, there is no real price tag that we can put on a college education, especially when you're coming from the University of California. I know I can't.
So now we're going to move on and talking about how can I get started? What are some of the tips that I can take away? And so I'm going to transition it over to Jeremy and Marcus, and I'm going to let them uh, come on camera and unmute themselves and introduce themselves as they begin to share some tips on what students can do while in high school and the California Community Colleges to best prepare for UC. All right. Thank you everybody for joining us today. My name is Marcus Mathis. I am here presently at UC Santa Barbara. I'm an alumni. I worked in the um, EOP department, which you'll learn about a little bit later, for about 10 years, and I'm happy to be the Assistant Director for Diversity Initiatives at UCSB in our admissions office. And I have my colleague Jeremy here as well. So we're looking at these, these first requirements here, right? I know Christina made some really good points about how every single campus is amazing, right? You cannot go wrong with the UC. And what it is, all, it's all about you and your preparation and what's going to be best for you. So what you want to focus on are these qualities that are going to really fit what your needs are, right? For example, I grew up in Inglewood, California. I felt like getting out of a big city was a good idea, right? So I came to Santa Barbara. I really enjoyed it. Now, some people might want to try something different, right? They might have come from a smaller city and want to try something a little bit larger or vice versa, right? So you have all these kind of options about what kind of an educational environment you want to live in. Major choice is another option you really, really want to consider because while these campuses do have a range of majors, a ton of range of majors, you'll find that some campuses have a few that others might not, right? For example, UCSB does not have a business major, but Riverside has a business major right? There's nursing programs. So be very, very careful looking at these programs and seeing if, your, if these campuses offer the major you're going to be looking for as a student here. And then finally, you know, campus size, right? You really want to look at, you know, the, the size of the school you're going to. How many undergraduates are there versus graduate students? We have larger campuses like UC Davis with around 40,000 students. And then we have uh, UC Merced with around eight. And UCSB sits kind of in the middle with around 23,000 undergraduates. So that campus size can also influence your experience while you're, while you're at UCSB, I mean, while you're at, at University of California School. Now, advice, I really, really would suggest that as you know, ninth, 10th, 11th graders, first year students at community college, go ahead and follow us all on social media. We all have great social media pages on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you use, and kind of see, you know, kind of what the vibe is of the campus, see what's happening on campus, see what, see what we're talking about. And that's going to help you kind of decide where you want to apply when it's time. And then while, you know, you're not quite ready to start writing your personal insight questions, you do want to start developing passions, right? You do want to start developing and moving more forward in areas you have an interest in, whether it be, you know, web design or, or uh, leadership in certain areas like sports, playing instruments, right? There are so many different ways you can get involved and really kind of push your own intellectual interests forward. Start doing that now. So when it's time to write those personal side questions and time to really show what you have going on, you can easily go ahead and do that. Next slide, please. All right. Thank you, Marcus. Once again, my name is Jeremy McWells. I am from UCR. I'm one of the assistant directors of admission here and glad to be here with you all today. Let's talk about some tips for preparing when it comes to the academics, right? Uh, let's start off with the idea that you need to make sure that you meet with your counselors regularly. Essentially, what I want to tell you is you want to make sure that you are besties with your counselors. And I'm not just talking about your high school counselors. I'm also talking about your UC admission counselors as well. You're even your financial aid counselors down the line when you get there, right? And the reason being is that once you submit that application down the line, things are going to move very fast, right? Before you know it, you're going to submit that application, then decisions come out. Then you're talking about CERD deadlines. Then you're talking about transcript submissions and orientation will be right around the way after that. So you want to make sure that you have somebody in your corner and have a large enough network to avoid any gaps in this, in this particular process. Then next, you're talking about connecting with UC campus representatives online. I talked about this a little bit, but you wanna make sure that you are connecting with an admission representative. It's really a no-brainer, especially now online. We have so many resources due to the pandemic. Our professions are really to assist you with navigating throughout this whole entire process. And I do understand, right, that not everybody is going to feel comfortable with going out of their way and, and, and networking and connecting with an admission representative. But let me just ask you this question. If you needed to fly a plane, are you going to ask a chef how to take off? Absolutely not. You're going to want to make sure you ask a pilot, right? It's the same concept. You want to make sure that if you're looking to apply what you see, you want to go to the person that can assist you the most, and that is your admission representative. Next up, you want to make sure to repeat any of those Ds or Fs. We understand that sometimes 
things just straight out don't go as planned and you end up with a D or F as a student, right? It's happened to the best of us. The key is here that you don't wanna settle for that grade. Make sure you go back and clean up those grades and repeat those courses. Um, going back to that idea of building your network, right? Speaking to your high school counselors, getting familiar with them if you're not already, to figure out ways how to repeat courses is gonna be key. And then when you apply, of course, you wanna communicate this information and additional comments, any application updates, emails to admission representatives as well. Next, above and beyond the minimum A through G requirements, right? You wanna take advantage of everything that your school has to offer. Don't settle, take, your, take the AP courses, take those AP exams, play to your strengths, right? Focus on what you are gifted in academically in order to become an even more competitive applicant. Next slide, please. Now let's switch gears over to preparing for any uh, tips for extracurriculars, right? We're talking about activities and engagement. When selecting an activity, you know, you want to definitely ask yourself, what is the meaning here for you with this activity? You want to make sure you're choosing an activity that's just more than something that you're putting on an application. Maybe you're looking at a community-based organization, maybe a social justice group, uh, something like uh, uh, Habitat for Humanity, even Serving Meals, or maybe you're talking about something in the sphere of academic clubs, debate, chess club, model United Nations. Maybe you're uh, really interested in the arts and creative pursuits, right? Painting, music, theater, whatever you select, think of the reason why this activity is important to, you know, really getting you to where you want to get in the future. Next up, make sure you want to focus on quality over quantity. You know, there's that saying that goes, a jack of all trades is a master of none, aka you really want to be strategic with what you select as an activity. Don't feel the need to go overboard. You want to focus on a unique set of activities and be selective with those choices. There's no correlation or connection between taking X amount of activities guarantees a, an admission at a UC campus. That's not a thing. So you want to make sure that, you know, you have really a passion about what your activities are and make sure you work within that. Then ask yourself, how do you contribute or how will you contribute? Paint the picture for us. How are you going to help this organization with their efforts? And remember, it's not about the position. It's about what you've done. If you're leading the charge or if you're simply just a part of it, we want to hear it either way. How long have you been involved? Give us the history. The chronological order is so important so we can see the progression over time. You know, one year you may be one position and the next you may have taken up another position. And last but not least, consider online activity um, as well as in-person activity. We understand that the global pandemic of COVID-19 affected us and impacted us in different ways um, and including activities for high school students as well. But did you take any activities online? If so, talk about it. What was the difference? What were you able to accomplish at this time? Uh, just make sure that you understand that the environment in which you did this in doesn't mean that your efforts mean any less than where you went per when you were in person, right? That's key. Next slide, please. And my last slide here is to talk about high, specifically about high school students in these three aspects, A through G requirements, AP courses, and GPA, right? When, he talks, when we talk about the A through G requirements, play through your strengths, right? Play to your strengths. We want to make sure that, as I mentioned before, you're going above and beyond the required A through G courses, uh, electives, taking quality electives can highlight competency in certain areas, being intentional with your courses uh, that you select in order to tell an academic story. Listen, if you have a talent in the arts, math, STEM, whatever it is, taking electives that support that and, sh and showcase that competency once again it's gonna go a long way when it comes to your application review. Remember that you're painting the picture, painting the picture of who you are as a student academically and personally, right? Course selection can definitely be a major tool when it comes to painting that picture. AP courses, be strategic. You can see a theme growing here, being strategic with your AP course selection, taking advantage of everything that your school has to offer. You know, consider those AP exams as well. You wanna make sure that you're taking it in a discipline that is your academic strength. The common theme here, once again, creates a strategy around AP courses and exams. Your school may have a plethora of AP courses or your school may have a limited amount. Either way, make sure that you leave no stone unturned. Uh, you wanna make sure that you're taking, if it's an exam or a course, in your academic strength. And then last but not least, GPA. Now with the elimination of standardized testing for UC admission purposes, GPA is definitely going to be one of the most important aspects of the application, there's no doubt. But academic excellence really does matter. Strong students 
will always have more campus options uh, and even more scholarship opportunities. So to wrap this up, you know, this event should really inspire you to kick it up a notch when it comes to your GPA and everything that I talked about. Every class matters, every assignment matters, every grade matters, right? What you do today will definitely impact your tomorrow. And now I'm going to kick it over back to Marcus so he can wrap things up. All right, thank you, Jeremy. So a lot of Jeremy's advice for high school is also going to apply to, to students that are transferring. Now, transfer can be an amazing option for so many students. You can save some money. You can kind of figure out more about what your interests are. And, and you know, it, it's, it really is a really good option. So I want people to consider that. Now, when you're doing this, you can also be preparing in your first year um, at, at City College, right? So one, look for, look for some research programs, right? These, these uh, research programs or bridge programs are amazing avenues into the UCs. Uh, pretty much all of our campuses have programs like this where you could spend a few days or even a week or two on campus, learn about the buildings, learn about what's being offered, take some courses, get some units, and it can really help you decide which campus you really prefer, which ones you'd like the most, right? Now, as say a non-traditional student, or maybe if you, if you, if you just worked it you know, in and out while you're, while, while you're in high school, your work experience is definitely going to come into play while you're, you know, looking at where to go and how to, to really make yourself more competitive or selective for the University of California schools. So work experience definitely comes into play. We have people that have, you know, been in the military and they come back and they want to, you know, get their degree. We have folks that, you know, 30, 40, 50 years old, they decide they want to change careers. They go back and get the degree they need, right? So that work experience that they had prior is still going to be very, very valuable. Right. We always say that nothing is going to subtract. Right. When you're when you're looking at uh, selectivity, it's only added value. Right. Everything you do is going to just add value to, to, to your selection process. Volunteer community service is also very important. Now, we talk about the PIQs a little bit. Now, this presentation is more so an introduction to the University of California. So we're not going to get into too much detail on this, but there are a series of personal insight questions, which we don't we never sort of say the word essay, but this is the way for you to really talk more about who you are. There's eight of them, right? As a transfer student, one of those questions is specific to what your long-term goals are and what your major preparations like. So start thinking about that kind of stuff as well. All right, next slide, please. Now, this is the best advice I can give you as a transfer student. Create that TAP account, please. It'll make your life so much easier. Creating a TAP account will really line up all your courses. So you'll, you'll know and the campuses will know exactly how your progress is looking and where you're at and what you need. Right. The other benefit to that is when you apply to the UC, when you do that, your, your uh, second year, third year, whenever you're prepared, right, that translate, all that information dumps right over to your application. So you don't have to re-enter all the courses you took as a, as a community college student, which is so, so valuable. Right. Now, also, seven course pattern, right, major preparation. You, you want to prioritize these things. Now, at community colleges, you can get what's called your IGTC, which is a great general ed kind of um, certificate you can earn. But for the UC transfer, you don't need to have an IGTC, right? You need to have satisfied 60 semester, 90 quarter units, and the seven course pattern is right, two English, one math, uh, and four from other, other areas, right? So if you complete those requirements, you'll be prepared and you'll be able to transfer over to the UC. Some advice though, we really wanna look at major preparation as well. For example, if you're majoring in say biology, you wanna transfer as a biology student, you wanna go ahead and make sure you're taking the, the chemistry and the biology and things like that, right? Really important. Also, what you're gonna see, a website I want you to write down, assist.org. Please go to that website, get all the information you can. What you're gonna see is that to transfer over, there's some recommended courses as well. And I would encourage you to also look at those recommended courses. So when you do transfer to the UC of your choice, you have, you, you know, you have the preparation that you really need to get done. And also UCE and UCM. UCE is English and UCM is math. Please, I know some of us don't like math. I kind of like math. Please don't wait until your last semester to take that math course because a lot of the campuses are gonna require that you take that before you even apply. All right, so make sure you get that done as well. Okay, next slide, please. And now we're gonna kick it off to Allura to get into our student panel. Hello, everyone. If you don't know me, you need to look at the chat. No one's <laughs> um, chatting more than me. So I will formally introduce myself. My name is Allura Davis. I will be moderating the student and parent panel for you all today. And thank goodness everyone has so many questions 
because I will be asking our student and parent panelists to um, show themselves now, <laughs> introduce themselves, and allow our audience members to hear UC voices, right? We're admissions representative, and I am the assistant director of undergraduate admissions here at UC Riverside. I recruit freshmen and transfers in a unit called Community Engagement and Outreach. And I work with Emoja partners and Black Student Union partners. Um, but our students really are who knows the most about our campuses. So let's begin and jump right into introductions and get some of those questions you have about our UC campuses answered ASAP, right? <laughs> um, so who would like to start us off? Pinder? Yeah, I can start us off. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for introducing me. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Gurpinder. Um, I'm a fourth year public health major at UC Merced. Um, one of the reasons why I chose UC Merced was because I was born and raised in the Central Valley. So to have a UC in the Central Valley definitely meant a lot to me and also gave me a lot of opportunities and room to grow personally and professionally. Um, some of my involvements are I'm a part of a dance team called Dance Coalition on campus. I'm a part of a national service fraternity called Alpha Phi Omega. And I also am a student ambassador. So um, what I do is I do a lot of outreach with prospective students virtually and in person, um, kind of just guiding them through their transition from high school into the university life, giving them resources and just be here as a guide and as an aid for them whenever they have any questions that we can help them with during their transition. Tanya. Hi everyone, my name is Tanya. I am a third year criminology law and society major. And if you can't already tell by my background, I am a student at IUCI. Um, so um, I am a transfer student. So I did start off my educational journey at community college. So if you guys have any questions regarding uh, transferring and all that stuff like that, make sure to uh, ask them. Um, so a little bit about me, I work in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions, so I do virtual and in-person outreach for prospective students. I also do tours for students. Um, I am also part of the Dream Scholars Program because I am an undocumented first-gen uh, first gen student. Um, I am also part of our Fresh Hub Needs Program. And outside of UCI, I am also a mock trial coach and a board member to uh, Legal Studies Academy. Can I just say that I love mock trials? Like only two people that have introduced themselves. And panelists, again, please feel free to keep yourselves on video um, so that we can allow our audience members to see your beautiful faces and see the students and the parents that are on our UC campuses. Um, would anybody else like to tell us a little bit about themselves? I can go. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Phoebe Melikidzi. I am a fourth year student at UCLA. I'm a communication major and an education studies minor, and I'm also a transfer student. So I transferred from College of the Canyons, which is in Santa Clarita, California. Um, so right after high school, I attended community college for two years, and I always knew that I wanted to attend UCLA, but this gave me a a great period of time to be able to figure out exactly what I wanted to do, which is to become a professor. So I'm really glad that I had that time at community college to really solidify what it is I wanted to do. Um, but now that I'm at UCLA, I'm involved in a couple of things here as well. And one of those is STOMP, which is the Student Transfer Outreach and Mentor Program. So I work as the coordinator for that program and we work with prospective transfer students to promote transferring to a school in the University of California. So absolutely love everything about that program. Um, I'm also a facilitator for the USIE program at UCLA, which stands for the Undergraduate Student um, Initiated Education. And in that program, I get to work with a professor and put together my own course to be offered at UCLA. And so that means next spring, I get to teach a communication class to UCLA students, which 
is amazing because I want to be a professor. So it's such good experience to be able to do that at UCLA. So there's been a lot of really great opportunities like that here. And then uh, outside of UCLA, I also work at my community college still at College of the Canyons. I'm an assistant coach for the speech team there. So kind of similar to mock trial. Uh, and yeah, that's a little bit about me. Y'all. I don't even have to say much, right? Like they're speaking for themselves. So if, if no one is amazed yet, wait till you meet Hannah. Hi everyone, my name is Hannah. I am a fourth year studying environmental policy and human rights at UC Davis. Um, I am also a first generation college student and I'm from a small town in Sonoma County. So here in Northern California. Um, I am also a public advisor within undergraduate admissions at UC Davis, um, and I am a student ambassador, so if any of y'all ever find yourself at Davis, I could be the one showing you around campus, which is really fun. Um, I am also involved with research in environmental policy department, and I am on a committee as part of ASUCD, which is our student government at UC Davis. Um, lastly, outside of UC Davis, I've also held internships in Sacramento, which is our state capital. Um, so if y'all have questions about like being close to Sacramento and things like that, definitely put them in the Q&A. Um, I personally really love the college town feel and the friendliness that UC Davis brings while also being really close to cities like Sacramento for those resources. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to answer all your questions tonight. Hi everybody, I am Monica Galvan and I am a proud parent of a student who transferred to UC San Diego. And I have so much to tell you. I wanted to have more time to talk, but I'm gonna be brief. Um, when my son was offered admissions to UC San Diego, I was so happy because to me, that was reaching for the skies, right? A top ranking university with professors who are Nobel Prize winners. And face it, the beauty of the campus is something that it has no, no other uh, campus could be so beautiful. So when he transferred over there, I was very, very happy because this is a research institution. And like Christina mentioned before, it teaches you to think outside of the box and to have your own um, thoughts and, and to question what people are telling you. So I knew this was gonna be a great environment for my son. And from, as a parent, from the experience with um, the admissions representative, the people from housing, everything has been so smooth, so wonderful that I'm very happy that my son is having a great time over there. Thank you so much, Monica. Sometimes we forget that our students have families back at home because once you get to our UC system, there's no leaving. Like literally, there's no leaving sometimes. People want to stay and work for the UC system once they graduate or they want to stay and get their master's or their PhD. Um, and we always have to remember our parents and our families of our UC students. So if you are a parent or a family member out there in our audience, Hello, we see you. We are representing you on this panel today. I would like to start with some of our student panelists and just ask, what does a typical day look like for you, especially in this virtual hybrid type of experience? And then let's just even talk about what it was like when you weren't virtual. Um, let our audience members know how fun your academic or your social life is on campus. Um, who would like to begin? I can go first. <laughs> um, so right now I do have a couple classes that are virtual and some that are still in person. So my typical day um, starts right around 9 a.m. I do have a virtual class um, most days of the week. Um, and then I do also have a class right after that that's in person. So I'm really lucky. I live super close to campus. Um, if y'all know anything about Davis, it's super bikeable and walkable. So I'm actually able to walk straight to class and get there um, in time, which is really awesome. Um, and then usually after that, I eat lunch on campus, uh, usually near the quad. We have something called the Coho, which has a bunch of like food options. Um, 
And I also have microwaves, like if you bring your own food. So sometimes I do a little bit of one or the other. Um, and then most days I also work at the Welcome Center on campus. So I mentioned I'm a public advisor. If any of y'all have ever called Davis or visited Davis, I could have been the one that you talked to. Um, and I also give tours. So um, some days I'm also actually just out on campus showing folks around the school, um, which is one of my favorite parts of my days. Um, just because I get to get to interact with so many prospective students and families and also interact with a lot of my friends on campus. Um, the community I work with is about 100 students. So I get to see a lot of familiar faces all over campus every day. And someone is asking specifically you, Hannah, how do they schedule a tour? Is it the same as UC Riverside where you just go online, pick a day and see if the time slot is available and you can book it right away and come with, you know, a small group, maybe um, one parent or one family member to um, visit the campus? Yeah, good question. Um, I dropped the link in the chat to our visit page, but yeah, you pretty much just make a reservation online. Um, I definitely recommend to do it as soon as you know the date you'd like to visit. Our spring tours fill up super fast. So I'll go ahead and drop that in the chat for you to look at. Thank you so much, Hannah. I know they want just to like to you. add that tours are mandatory. <laughs> you should go on tours and visit all the universities that your children are considering because that is when you can actually have a feel of the place and look at all the beauty of the campuses. What is something else as a parent that you would tell another parent that is interested in having their student attend the University of California? Well, definitely uh, let them choose and take them to tour all the places. And sometimes we may feel something different than them, but they are the ones that are going to go on this long term commitment and um, they will have the feeling. And that's important. And then encourage them to go out and participate and, and join clubs and try to look for a job on campus, because that's a way to make friends, too. You are going to miss them and they are going to miss you, but it's going to be important that we let them fly. <laughs> That's very sweet. Alongside her advice, I would really, really, truly urge parents to sit with their, with their, you know, with their, with their child and work on the application together. They're going to need a lot of information and it doesn't really... <laughs> feel the greatest to give your child all of your tax information, but trust me, we won't give it to the government. <laughs> it's only for the purposes of giving your child as much free money as we can. So definitely take advantage of your child trying to apply to the UC system, whether they're in high school or whether they're in community college, they will need some assistance. And a lot of our students are first-generation college students, right? So that means nobody in their family has been to college. So they will need a little bit of assistance just to support them in the entire process, right? Um, Phoebe, Speaking of community and joining clubs and getting involved, um, can you talk about how you found your community and how did you get so involved with all of your internships and jobs? Definitely, yeah. Um, when I transferred to UCLA, everything was still online. I transferred in the fall of 2020. So I was initially very intimidated by that, not quite sure how I was gonna get to know people there. But I made it my mission. I was like, all right, I'm going to get some friends here, like it or not. And I just started getting involved in like any club that I could find that was even if it was online. Um, and I joined one organization called the Transfer Leadership Coalition at UCLA and was in that for a period of time. And through that is actually how I found out about the job application for Stomp. Um, and so I applied shortly after and started getting involved in Stomp. And that has since become my main thing now that I'm at UCLA. Um, I think the best part about it is because it's simultaneously a job where I'm getting great work experience, but I'm also like fulfilling that social need too, because I get to run a club for UCLA students. And so it really like thrust me into the transfer community here, which is such a great community at UCLA. And so I got to know a lot of people very, very quickly. And so 
uh, that has just been a really, really great experience. I've gotten to know so many people from such a wide range of backgrounds, since many like transfer students are non-traditional students as well. And so I would say that that's something that would really apply to anybody is um, any group that you feel you identify with, there is likely a student group that is uh, for that. And so looking for any group that you would like to get to know people of a similar background in, I suggest you do that because for myself, looking for people in the transfer community, I think is where I found my closest bond. And I just really love being a part of that at UCLA. I love it. I love it. I, I, I really do miss being an undergraduate student, but it's not about me. So let's go back to Tanya. And um, speaking of non-traditional type of students, you mentioned that you're undocumented. A lot of people have questions about financial aid, whether you're undocumented or not. And then just what's going on with CRIM? A lot of people are asking about criminology and I love UC Irvine, dot, dot, dot. So I'm gonna plug the criminology law and society program. And um, maybe you could also, touch on what if they stop liking CRIM? How do you change your major and stuff like that? Yeah, so thank you for transitioning. Um, so yeah, as I did mention earlier, I am an undocumented student. And I know a lot of undocumented students, the first thing they do is kind of panic when it comes to what is life after high school? Like, you know, what, what can we do? And I went through the similar process when I was in high school, which is why I chose to go to community college because I wasn't well informed about the resources that were offered to students like me. Um, but fortunately, there is help out there. We do have our Cal Dream Act application, which is our way of getting financial aid. So this is what is putting me through college right now. Um, I am fortunate to be able to apply to this program and be able to get help by our government. Um, it is a little bit more selective when it comes to scholarships and obviously federal aid does not come in touch with us because we don't qualify for it, but there is help. So if you are undocumented, make sure that you do check out the Cal Dream Act application and do it before it is late. Obviously our deadline already passed, um, but if you are going to plan to transfer, uh, make sure that you do fill it out as soon as it opens, October 1st, make sure you fill it out. Um, and then going back to the criminology program, um, that is actually why I chose to go to UCI. UCI is the only UC that actually offers a crim program, and it is actually number one in the undergraduate division. So, <laughs> so yes, um, but I have uh, thus far loved um, my classes, because as I stated earlier, it's not just criminology, it's criminology, law, and society. So it focuses on those three aspects. It's not just criminal justice. Um, when I was in community college, it did focus a lot more on the law enforcement side and just kind of in one aspect. And when I started at UCI, it did focus more on, hey, yeah, law enforcement, but there's also like the laws and how it is. Um, so in the sociological aspect, um, the major does belong to our school of social ecology. So it is more of the study of the way people interact with each other. Um, so, so far I've taken some really cool, interesting classes. I, for example, this quarter, I have the opportunity to take a domestic violence class, uh, social control of juvenile delinquency, crimes of the state. And next quarter, I'm fortunate to take a uh, constitutional law, American law, family law. So there is a variety of courses. Like I said, it's not just one aspect. It focuses on criminology, the actual law aspect, and the sociological per perspective. So it's, it's a variety of courses that we can take. Thank you so much. Um, I love Irvine. I can't say it enough. <laughs> um, but to be number one in anything is amazing. And most of our UCs are top ranking, right? We're top tier research one institutions. So really, really take advantage of that experience. I know a lot of people were talking about being an out-of-state student. What's the benefit of University of California? Well, first of all, the University of California <laughs> is the, the best benefit just because of those high titles, high rankings, faculty members, staff members. It's truly an experience to say the least. Um, Rapinder, how has your experience been in Merced? And how has your experience been? You're a first year, right? You came into Merced as a freshman? Um, so I'm actually currently a fourth year. Did you come in as a- But I came in as a first year, yeah. Yes, yeah, so let's 
the high schoolers know how to make it to your fourth year at the University of California Merced, right? It's not a it's not an easy task for some people. Is it hard to like get classes? Um, what was your experience like? Um, so for my experience, so I was lucky enough to at least experience my first year in person before COVID hit. Um, one of the things I will say I'm grateful for is that even though UC Merced is a smaller campus, um, one of the things that I got the opportunity to have is more one on one professor interaction with my professors. Um, it was really easy for me to be able to, you know, for them to recognize my name for me to just um, communicate with them to learn about their research. For me, I think that's what definitely helped ease my transition because I came in a little bit nervous, um, kind of scared to reach out to professors. But I think one of the things that definitely helped is the fact that I was able to have that one-on-one -on -one connection with my professors. That definitely eased my transition. And I would just say, don't be afraid to look for the opportunities that are there. I think diving into your first year, it can be a bit nerve wracking to figure out what programs are offered or how it works out. But I think the most important thing to do for yourself is just to look out for them. The university can provide them, but you have to go get the opportunities yourself and put yourself out there and don't be afraid to because that's what the universities are there for to help provide and help promote you with the best experiences that you can. Um, I was really lucky to be able to connect with professors in research, things like that, be interested. We also offer programs such as UROC where students have the opportunity to engage in research, not only just during the academic year, but also during the summer. So that's something that I was able to look into and also as well um, with my major in public health one of my last I guess credits that I needed was like a public health internship so I got to connect with a lot of epidemiologists around in the Central Valley and for one of my um, projects I got to think about um, we got to actually do test studies on COVID in the different regions in the Central Valley so that was something that was very interesting and tied in a lot with my major with COVID-19. So I, I would definitely say it was a bit nerve wracking for me personally, just jumping in. But I think once I got more comfortable and just looked for those opportunities, it definitely made me feel more at home. Monica, what made you want your child to apply to the UC system and encourage them to attend, obviously your child is at UC San Diego, a very beautiful campus, like you said, but what really sealed the deal for you? And what would you encourage parents to maybe research on their own to encourage their student um, to attend the University of California? Yeah, so I was the first generation going to college and I was intimidated with the idea of a research institution. I didn't really have a clear understanding of what, what it meant. So when I learned that doing research doesn't have to be just in the STEM uh, field, it could be research on anything. And when you go to a UC, I learned um, firsthand that you actually get prepared for grad school. It really prepares you well, and it makes you think. Uh, so the opportunities to attend a research institution was always important to me. So when the time came, I encouraged my son to look at all the options, but I was pushing for a UC campus. <laughs> and then um, when I went on tours, um, one campus was as beautiful as the other, and there was no really um, uh, anything negative. Uh, but um, having the, the people from San Diego being so outstanding when it comes to reaching out to students and responding and being open and, and showing the place, that's, that's what I think took my son's attention. And uh, and I like it. I love it because I can brag that he's attending that campus now. <laughs> I want to know <laughs> from Hannah or any of the other student panelists, what is it like if you can't register for a class that you want? Have you ever experienced impacted classes? And what is it like being in a quarter system, right? That's nothing like high school <laughs> and technically it's nothing like community college either there's a couple of our UCs 
that are in the um, semester system, but what is it like being at a UC and trying to take courses and what is the professors like? Just talk us about academics. Yeah, um, so UC Davis is on the quarter system. Uh, that's something that I was a little bit nervous about coming from Mr. System High School. Um, one thing I will say is I definitely couldn't imagine being on a different system now that I'm on the quarter system. Um, I really love it because if you're not really interested in a class or you're not having the greatest time in it, it's just 10 weeks and then you're done with it. Um, I also found that I've been able to take a lot more classes over the course of a year since we do choose classes three times in the year rather than twice. So I am able to take a lot more classes, um, which I really like because there's so many classes that are offered for my major that I can kind of like pick and choose what I'm most interested in. And so many of them sound really interesting to me. So that's been really helpful to have extra time to do that. Um, in terms of getting into classes? That's another great question. Um, I actually came in as a neurobiology, physiology, and behavior major, so I actually changed my major, and I can also talk about that later, um, but in a lot of those entry-level classes my freshman year, um, they were really large classes, um, and so I was really nervous about not being able to get into them, um, like big, large, like biology, chemistry, math classes, that kind of thing. Um, one thing that I found is that um, I actually was not put on the wait list for any of those, which is really great. Um, but even if I was, my advisors were super helpful in building me a four-year plan right when I got to UC Davis. And it has built-in flexibilities. So those classes that they know are large are offered every single quarter. There's multiple sections every single quarter and they're um, able to be moved around. So if you don't get into it one quarter, that doesn't mean you're now off track. Um, you are able to take it a different quarter and that doesn't really put you behind in terms of graduating in four years, which is something that I really appreciated. Thank you, Hannah. And for those that might not know, um, a lot of our universities of California have the same titles, but mean different things, right? So obviously I'm an admissions representative. A lot of people call me admissions advisors. You have an admissions counselor. Um, we have admissions representatives to help you all. But once you enroll in our University of California, you will be assigned an academic advisor through your major or your college. Um, and then if you take a course with somebody as a professor, you, you know, you have your professor then that can advise you, but then you also have a teaching assistant for some courses, and sometimes they teach a course. Um, so there's a lot of acronyms and a lot of different job descriptions and titles that you will also need to try to research and understand and learn um, once you get to our campus. Um, Tanya, can you talk about that process for you once you first got to UC Irvine? And, you know, how did you even find your job on campus? How do you look for money on campus? Like, if you don't want to work, can you apply for scholarships while you are in the University of California after you've graduated from high school or your community college? Is there still opportunities for more money, grants, scholarships? Um, and just jobs and internships and stuff like that on campus? Yeah, definitely. So similar to uh, Phoebe, I also transferred when we were at the peak of the COVID pandemic. So I actually, this is actually my second quarter at UCI. So I'm fairly new to everything of how the UC system works. Um, but my orientation, all of my events were through Zoom. So I didn't get to experience that uh, personal connection with students and staff and faculty. So when I began my first quarter, it was kind of like a punch in the face because I kind of had to adapt to everything on my own. But fortunately, during the summer, I did have a lot of time to be able to visit UCI and get familiar with where is Aldrich Hall, which is our admissions build, our, our administration building. Where are the restrooms? Where are the snack uh, places and all that stuff like that? But it was definitely a big shift, uh, similar to, um, to what Hannah said, we are also on a quarter system. So it is really fast paced. So one week it's one chapter, the following it's another chapter, but I also wouldn't trade it. I really like the way the quarter system rolls. It is a lot faster, but you also learn 
to learn faster and adapt to it quicker. Um, so for me, trying to get involved on campus was kind of like a little hard just because, as I stated, I am a first gen, so I didn't know what each resource had to offer for me. So I started off with uh, joining the Dream Scholars Program, which is a program for AB 540 students, again, undocumented students. So through here, we are able to be paired up with a mentor and like we also have our advisor from our school, but this person is also a student. So we get to learn more about how their chain, her, how they adapted to changing. Um, so my mentor is also a criminology major. So I get to get a lot of advice from her on which classes to choose. Should I leave my field study till the end of the quarter, till the end of the year, or should I get on it right now? So being part of this program is what actually helped me find my community because I was kind of like, no, I, I imposter, imposter syndrome. I don't belong here. I'm undocumented. I'm not worth being here at this school. So it's it helped me find my community of other people who are also like me, but it also helped me branch out to other places as well. And it's actually how I found my job. Um, so I was really shifty about reading my emails, what other opportunities is there. So I got the email for my job and I was like, I'm going to apply for it. And fortunately, I did get it. So I'm very happy about that. So um, it's been really hard trying to adapt to it, but it's also been quite a really fun, emotional, and just great ride. So <laughs> I'll leave it to any of you. Emotional. You ain't got to lie. You ain't got to lie. It's an emotional roller coaster. You have a lot of highs, you have a lot of lows, but at the end of the day, all of these people on this screen is getting a degree, right? That's what that's what the main goal is. But how do you juggle all of that? Phoebe, I know that you may not have gotten the hookup with your job. Like, can you talk about resource centers, career centers, academic resource center, um, even in terms of networking so you can get a hookup for a job, whether you're at, you know, your university or you're graduating from your university? What does that look like for you at UCLA to network and have to go to these different resource centers and truly advocate for yourself, right? Definitely. There's a lot of programs at UCLA and all the UCs that are designed to help for literally any need that you may have. Like, I guarantee you any question you have, like, it can be answered. And so definitely just seeking out what kinds of resources there are. Like, there are so many people that want to help you. Um, while I haven't had experience using all of those, I do have like a glimpse of each of them. And so I would say that in terms of networking and career center, one of the greatest things I had was um, a communication class I took that was designed to simply bring in guest speakers and help people find internships. And there are a lot of programs and classes like that across all of these campuses where people will purposely try and set you up with different connections in any fields that you're looking for. And on top of that, in that class as well, we also had um, several workshops from the Career Center come and talk to us about setting up a profile uh, for your LinkedIn and all kinds of other things like that to get um, in touch with different opportunities through the campus and outside um, in the local area as well. And so I think in terms of careers and internships, like you totally got all the hookups that you need there to be able to get any experience that you're looking for. And then I think in terms of academic help too, um, I know that there are a lot of different ways that you can get tutoring and help as well. Um, and I think a big thing too, is just taking any initiative that you need to, like in your classes, if you need to get extra help for something, just reaching out to a professor or your TA, your teaching assistants um, will all be willing to help you. And so um, I think the, the biggest thing among all of it, like going back to what I initially said is just reaching out and making that first ask because there's so, so many people that want to help you in any way that you need it. So definitely reach out for any of those things that you're looking for. Um, and then going back to the part about balancing all of it, I, I think that while there are so many like exciting opportunities that will come your way when you do transfer and you're going to want to take all of them at once, um, it can get overwhelming fast. And I'm like, the queen of taking on way too many things at once. So I understand how that can be. Um, but I think that as long as you're finding your own method to stay organized in all of that, then um, you're gonna be okay to still do all the things that you wanna do. Balancing your academics, your social life, if you're gonna have a job as well. Um, finding any method that works for you to stay organized will 
be critical there, but you'll be able to get it all done too. Ooh, again, y'all bringing back memories. I had three jobs on campus. I was in a dance group. I was in a mentorship group. I was in a sorority. Shout out to the AKAs. Like, it was just so much going on, but I didn't realize that these are all resume builders. I was having fun getting involved, but this looks amazing on your resume. Um, Hannah, somebody wants to talk specifically to you <laughs> um, and learn more about your story. Why didn't you pursue neurobiology? What can we learn from your story specifically? I told you, you were the popular one in the, in the Q&A. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, throughout high school, I was really unsure of what I wanted to do, what I wanted to study. Um, and I thought neurobiology because I was interested in potentially pursuing psychiatry and going to med school. Um, I think once I got to Davis and was really just going through the classes, I realized I just wasn't passionate about going to med school. And that's something that you need to be really passionate for to succeed at. Um, so I talked to um, some advisors in different majors I was interested in, one of which being environmental policy, which is what I am now. Um, and the switch was super easy, which is something that I was really surprised about. Um, after my first quarter at Davis, I just met with an environmental policy major advisor. She talked through what the major looks like, what the classes are. Um, and built me a four-year plan. And then I literally submitted, like, it took me probably three minutes to fill out an online form. And within a week, my major was officially changed. Um, so it's super easy. Um, and I always tell people that come on my tours on campus, if you're indecisive, that's totally okay. I think that's super normal, especially being a high school student, not really sure what you want to do. Um, and the UC system makes it really easy to change your mind after you've started classes. Um, so, you know, you do have to stick it out for that one quarter. Usually that's not a big deal and you can take classes that will actually go towards your new major as well. Um, but, you know, after that first quarter uh, or semester, um, they do really make it easy and accessible to change your mind, which I really appreciate. I love it. Love it. No wonder they wanted to hear about it. <laughs> um, speaking of switching majors, I came in as psychology. I switched to undecided, undeclared because I realized the type of psychology that I was being taught was not the type of psychology that was being taught in my high school. And I actually didn't like it. Um, and I switched after undecided, undeclared to sociology, which I had no idea wasn't even a, a word in high school. So I would have never realized my love for sociology and people if I wasn't allowed to change my major so many times. <laughs> so shout out to all the academic advisors and counselors. Um, speaking of just getting advice on like a major or a course, can we get some advice for those who want to live on campus? Grupinder, isn't Merced requiring people to live on campus? How is that experience for you? Yeah, so it is a requirement for first years to live on campus. Um, with that, though, I think that's definitely helped build my connections on campus a lot. Um, I was able to meet a lot of people in my who lived in my dorm area. And um, one of the things that I liked about my first year is um, the dorm building that I was in was based on a living learning community that I was involved in. So I was in a living learning community for the year. And all the people that lived on my floor, we were in a class together. We were learned about um, education resources, leadership, community service. It was just a really fun way for me to connect and meet other people and also gain uh, more access to resources on campus. I feel like definitely living on campus has helped me, motivated me whenever I'd walk building, I'd be curious, oh, like, what is that resource about? And then they promote it all the time. So I think one of the best things I think definitely enhanced my college experience was definitely living on campus. I've made so many friendships, even my roommate from first year, um, we paired up completely strangers, but we're like close friends to this day. Um, I got really lucky with her. So I think it's just memories like that, um, being an open mind, taking an open mind with things and, you know, just being open to everything. I think that's definitely what's helped is 
getting me the exposure to try out for things, whether it's for jobs, internships, or just getting involved on campus was definitely what motivated me. Same. I met my roommate in an early start summer bridge program, and we'll, we're still friends to this day. I was in the hospital room when she had her baby. <laughs> um, so yeah, once you live on campus, not only are you close to everything on campus, but you get a different type of experience that non-people that live on campus, I forgot the word, it's a word for those people, commuters. <laughs> it's a different experience for commuters and people that live on campus. And I didn't live in the regular traditional dormitory style. We also have living learning communities that are luxury style. Um, for example, if you are a part of a specific cultural group, even we have like black houses or um, if you want to live in the LGBTQ house, there's just so many amazing, again, experiences for everyone. Did you catch that? You see for everyone. Um, anyways, I'm going to try to conclude the panel, even though I just want to talk with everybody on the panel, because this is my first time moderating um, with these um, panelists. And now I love them. We have to keep in contact. <laughs> Monica, and for everybody else, the last question is going to be, what is your most important advice? for our audience members, whether they're a parent, whether they're you know, a high schooler or a transfer student, what is the most important advice you would leave them with in your opinion? Yeah, um, so as a parent, we are always worried, but we, we help them grow into these amazing human beings. So now um, I, I would like them to be trusted with their own decisions and to be supportive of any, any uh, decision that they take. I would recommend that you go on tours as soon as possible to see what's out there. Phoebe, Rupinder, Tanya, then Hannah. Um, and then somebody wants to learn about me. Um, <laughs> really quickly someone was like what was your experience like as a black woman in the uc system and we're going to need a whole nother webinar just to talk about that um so if anybody is interested in learning more about me as a black woman in the uc system i'm going to leave my email in the chat i don't mind leaving it in the chat but i'll quickly say that i wouldn't be right here in this position talking to you all without the UC system. I got my master's of education at Hawaii Pacific University, and I did research at the University of California, Irvine on Black and African-American persistence and retention rates. I get to literally recruit Black students for my job at UC Riverside. My whole life has surrounded my experience in the UC system. And like I said, it truly was a roller coaster of highs and very, 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 very low lows. <laughs> Um, but I, I love the UC system. I obviously encourage everybody to apply every single day for my job to the UC system. And there's just amazing experiences that can't really happen unless you're in the UC system. So for example, that research, I don't know if I would have been able to do or get money for if I wasn't a UC student. Um, and yeah, I have so much to say about my experience. So thank you, Dom, for leaving my email. For the person that left me that question, I'm always available to Zoom with students or Zoom with parents and families that are interested in speaking about the Black experience that you see. So hit me up um, and then I'll, you know, turn it over to the rest of our students to share their very, very small piece of advice. Um, and then we'll conclude our event and I'll allow you guys to screenshot a list of resources that I compiled personally for you all. So please stick in there, stick in there. Uh, for myself, real quick, my piece of advice is get involved in anything and everything you can. Um, you learn a lot about what you end up wanting to do as a career, what things you are or are not interested in. Um, my greatest example is that I always hated public speaking, and then I joined a speech team, and now I'm way more outgoing than I ever was, was able to get out of my shell and do something that I thought I would never be good at, but now have been able to turn into a skill. So get involved in anything you can. 
Um, adding on to that, I would just say keep an open mind with things. Um, definitely keep an open mind on the opportunities that are there, especially if you go into your first year and if like you're at the dorms. Um, take advantage of all the opportunities that are there. You know, the UC is there. The UC system is there to help guide you and provide you the support that you need. And they understand that they just want to provide you with the opportunities for you to grow, whether it's in like professional or personal development. Just take advantage of all that you can and don't be afraid to you know, just reach out for resources as well. Yeah, and on my end, kind of to reiterate what uh, Phoebe and Kapinder have said, um, kind of just don't be afraid to try new things and just kind of be open to new ideas, new activities, everything, and just don't doubt yourself. Just kind of have that little voice in your head that you, tells you that you belong there because at the end of the day, you are at UCLA, UC Irvine, UC Merced for a reason. That's because the, admin, the admissions uh, advisor saw something in you. So trust yourself, get involved and just have fun because it's gonna fly by super quick. <laughs> yeah, kind of going off that, um, my advice is more for where y'all are at now as prospective students. Um, high school flies by really fast, college flies by really fast. I can't believe I'm already a fourth year. Um, so just really enjoy your time right now. And as you're kind of applying, you want to go to college, like, to where you feel comfortable and understand you is going to be for the next four years. Um, and so it is really important that you are really excited to feel comfortable the campus choose. Just really pay attention to your own Was that everybody? Okay, well, we're at time. Dawn, if you don't mind resharing the screen. Um, like I mentioned, we do have a few different resources for different areas and topics that this webinar did not cover. So next slide, take a photo, take a screenshot. Um, you know, iPhone allows you to take a screenshot and copy and paste the words. Did y'all know that? You could take a photo and select all this text, copy it and paste it into your notes and boom, you got the link, okay? So these are general personal insight question links um, because again, we did not go over that in this webinar, but we do in different webinars. So next slide, if you didn't get that assist.org, link for all of my students that are interested in transferring. Assist.org will be your best friend. We also have websites for each financial aid office, um, their phone numbers if you need to contact them when the time is right, you know, do that. And then the last slide is basically all of our admissions contacts. Um, I know a lot of people wanted to talk with us individually about the UC of their interest. Contact us, come to our info sessions, Come take a tour, like Hannah said, and take advantage. Be open. Don't be afraid to reach out to folks for more resources and opportunities. UC is for everyone. Ah, y'all like how I did that. That was everybody's advice. So again, thank you so much for coming to this webinar. We hope that you had an amazing experience. Got it again. Um, join us for a UC experience by applying to UC. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Enjoy.